Hi, my name is Bonnie Barker, and today I'm going to show you how to make a dishcloth. And this pattern is specially designed for beginners and is a great way to learn the single crochet. To begin, you're going to need some materials. I highly recommend that you find a ball of 100% of cotton. This is a worsted weight. Uh, it's available at most craft stores in many different colors, and, and it's also available at big store retailers such as Walmart and other places that carry yarn. I also recommend a size H or 8 crochet hook, which is also a 5.50 millimeter hook. And I also recommend that you get a couple of these. These are yarn needles, which are fantastic for hiding loose threads, and I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. And you're going to need a sharp pair of scissors to cut the strands. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is begin with a slip knot. And I'm going to go slowly over this, especially if you're a brand new beginner. Okay, for this, I'm going to twist the yarn with the hook, like so, and then come up under and pull the strand through to make my slip knot. I'm going to do that again. If you have the yarn in front of you, I'm going to push away like that. You have a little twist now, and then come down below and put the yarn in front of the hook and pull it through. You have to be especially careful with this type of yarn because it tends to be a little bit stiffer and it has many different strands. It has four plies to it. But if that's a little too difficult, let me go ahead and show you an easy way to do this without using the crochet hook at all. If you want to make, actually let's do it this way, if you want to make a loop like this and then just bring the yarn up through the bottom and then pull on the tail. Let me do that again. Just we're going to turn, actually turn it, actually this way, turn it this way and bring the big loop which is attached to the ball up through the middle and give the tail a tug and then from that point on you can stick it onto your crochet hook, make it so it's about the size of this round part of the crochet hook. Now if you have other type other style crochet hooks like the boy hooks, they are actually designed a little bit differently and if you if you pull it tight around those sections or even of this uh, Susan Bates hook, it's going to be too small. So you're going to want this chain at the beginning to at least be on the looser side rather than the tighter side because we're going to have to work in each of these loops that we make. Now for the chain, we put the yarn over the back of the hook and pull through, over the back, pull through, over the back pull through. You want to do this till you have 25 chains. So I'm going to go ahead and make my 25 chains and then I will come back to you. Okay, now that I've completed my 25 chains, I'm going to begin by working single crochets and I'm going to go in through just one of the loops of the chain. If you can see the chain and if you can see it kind of as a V kind of as the letter V, and I'm just going to work in this one side of the V's going all the way across. And this is actually the most challenging part of a crochet project, is getting started. Once you get started and have something to grab onto, it does get much easier. And of course, just like anything in life, with a little bit of practice, or in some cases a lot of practice for some of us, it does become much more easy and fluid. Alright, so we're going to skip that first chain, and starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two loops, and you've made your single crochet. Stick the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over the back, and pull the loop through. Now some people may say, is it really important that you put the loop in back rather than in front? I think it is kind of important, or very important, because it really does help your stitches to become more fluid. Okay, and also if you're a, a true beginner and have never done this before, take a look at my video on how to hold the yarn. I'll give you a really quick tutorial right here. If you've never done this before, I like to put my yarn over these first three fingers and then over the front. My pinky here is going to grab on to the yarn. It's kind of like my brake man and the foreman. Uh, bobsled if you've ever watched that in the Olympics. Well this is the man in the back who holds on to the brake handle. It controls the tension of my work and that is extremely important. This finger controls kind of bringing 
yarn through for me. It kind of helps loosen that tension and feeds the yarn into the project. Now the tall man and the thumbkin, these both hold the work closely. I don't even think about this anymore because muscle memory has taken over and, and does so much work for me. But these two fingers, or the thumb and the, and the tall man finger, is going to actually do something good. It's going to hold the project where I'm working so that I can work my stitches. And as you see here, I put the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and my fingers actually automatically kind of grab the stitch a little bit just to kind of help hold it. Once you get a lot of... Um, fabric crocheted then it, it does become easy easier like I said so I'm going to go ahead and work these stitches all the way across I'm going to go ahead and just work this row with the camera running because if you're a true beginner you may never have seen this and I probably should slow down a little bit for you stick the hook in pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two loops Go ahead and get some more yarn here. Stick that hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. Yarn in, pull up a loop, yarn over the back, and pull through two. Let's take a look at what we've got so far. Now if you find that this is curling up a lot on you, like if this is really, really tight and it's all curly, it's because this chain down here is too tight. You're going to want to take it undone and try to either crochet it more loosely or what you could do is get another crochet hook that's one size bigger. This is a size I and crochet your chain using a bigger hook and then when it comes time to working the stitches go back to your smaller hook. A lot of people do that who are even experienced crocheters because their chains are so tight and it will really help to loosen that chain so that it's just the right tension to do the foundation row. Okay, and this is the last stitch right here. I wanted to work this for you. Now notice this is our slip knot right here that's pulled real tightly. We don't work in that. Okay, that doesn't count as the chain count either. So now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn. And now this is the back side facing. And what I'm going to show you next is what we're going to do uh, for many rows. Okay, we're going to stick our hook in. Now look at the top of this, how you have like these V stitches up on top. Okay, we're going to stick the hook under both of those and form our stitch. Stick under both of those loops, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And you'll find that this is much easier than just working in that single loop of the chain, or at least I certainly do. And this is what it should start to look like. Okay, so yarn under both of those loops or under the V, yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way across, and I'll show you what I have at the end. And by the way, you should have 24 single crochets all the way across. I want to show you the end of the row. Here's the last stitch, and we're going to just finish that single crochet. We're going to chain one and turn. Now many of you may have a question, like for example, how do I know where the last stitch is? Well, visually is the answer, You can, but if you're not used to seeing visually where that last stitch is, what you can do is count how many stitches you have all the way across. You should have 24 stitches. If you have more than that, then you're adding, and if you have less than that, then you've probably skipped stitches along the way. It's really hard for me to teach specifically like that, and that's why um, it's best to go to your local yarn store and get proper instruction where you can get feedback, which is immediate. But um, there's a lot you can learn with the videos. It's, it is second best, understandably. It's not like having grandma or your mom or, or somebody that you know and respect that knows how to do this sitting next to you. But it, this is, can be a close second. Okay, so now for the rest of the rows, what we're going to do is just work single crochets by working under both loops of the single crochets of the other row. Okay, after measuring this, I see that what I have so far is about seven and a half inches, so I'm going to work my single crochet rows until the depth of this piece is about seven and a half inches. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you what I have. Okay, I have worked a total of 24 rows, and this is what I have. It should be reversible. The front should look the same as the back. And now I'm going to show you how to put an edging around. So this is the last row worked right up here. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn the cloth 90 degrees, and I'm going to be working along the row end. So I am simply going to work one single crochet in each row end, and I'm just going to be crocheting just like I'm showing you now. Like here is the um, last stitch of the row. I just go in that little hole right like that. Okay, now here is the chain from the, uh, the row next to that. So I just go in there, and I'm going to do this all along. I'm going to just do, do a little bit and show you just in case there's a question about it. Now, um, you know, some people like to even go in through the stitch and split the stitch. You know, sometimes you can do that. I'm just, I'm just using the entire stitch right now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and continue this to the corner. Okay, I have single crochet working along the edge all the way until I get to the corner. Okay, once I get to the corner, which is the last this is actually the last stitch here. You can work an additional one, but I'm not going to. I'm going to chain two. I'm going to turn, and I'm going to work another single crochet in that same place as the last stitch was worked. So I can create a little corner like this. Okay, now I'm going to work one in each of the remaining, uh, or, or actually along the foundation row. Now, it might be kind of hard to know, well, which strand do I put my hook into? What I like to do is I like to find where the stitch was, because this is this, like, a stitch was right here. There are two strands, so I go in the hole that's just opposite that stitch. I'm also crocheting over the thread that was left from our foundation row, so I don't have to worry about hiding this later. If you don't do it this way, it's okay. You can just let that thread dangle and not worry about crocheting over it. And I can show you how, to, I'm going to show you how to hide the remaining thread anyway. But we'll just go ahead and work like this along that foundation round. Go ahead and do that to the corner. And then I'll show you how to work up the other side. After working along that foundation chain all the way, to the corner. Now it's time to chain two, one, two, and we're going to work along the other side, the other row end. So go ahead and do another. I'm going to try that again. Go ahead and put a single crochet in the same place as the last stitch to form that corner and just work along the row ends. It may look a little different than the other row ends. But you can kind of see where the stitches are, and you see the another hole here. So just one stitch per row end. Now, if you find that going around that the stitches are um, bulkier or uh, wider than they need to be, you can always step down to a smaller crochet hook for this round. I'm not needing to do that. But once in a while, I'll, I'll run into a situation where I don't like the way it looks. And if it looks too, you know, too bulky for the area, just step down the size of the hook one size until you get it to where you like the way it looks. Okay, after going all the way across that other side with the row ends, go ahead and put your last stitch in the first row, just like that. Chain two, and then put another stitch in that same place to form another corner. And now we just put one stitch in each single crochet all the way across. And I'll show you at once I get to the corner. Okay, I've single crocheted all the way across. Now there's two ways to end this. One way would be to chain two and then simply join with a slip stitch, right like that. And we would end up with a nice square dishcloth, and that's perfectly fine. But I want to do something a little special to end this. Um, I want to put a little 
uh, hook, little loop at the corner so that when this becomes wet from use, I can just simply hang it on a hook at my kitchen, um, near my kitchen sink. So I've got to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some chains. I'm taking those two chains out from the first um, way of doing it. And let's say this, let's try eight chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and I can join to the very first stitch, or I can join to this, uh, well, let's just go ahead and do a slip stitch. In case you've not seen a slip stitch before, you insert into the stitch, pull up a loop, we do not wrap anything, and then just pull it through again. And then that way you have a little loop at the end. Now to finish off or to fasten off, we're gonna make a chain like this, and then we're gonna pull it tightly we're going to take the scissors and we're going to leave a strand at least four or five inches long and we're just going to pull that on through okay and give it a nice tug so now we have a loop that we could hang hang in our you know in our kitchen near our sink um, so this can dry now let's get rid of this strand right here and this is where we bring in our yarn needle and thread that nicely like so. Now you're going to want to hide this on the back side and really this is a reversible item but if you want to can by looking at the round that we did with single crochet that would be the front and this would be the back but honestly it's not going to matter much um, with this particular project. But I'm going to go ahead and turn this and what we're going to do is we're going to bring this down into the stitches. I hope you can see this. Um, and there's no perfect way to do this and there's no absolute you got to do it this way or, or no way. It, it, what the idea is to hide this stitch underneath all the other stitches so that it is secured and doesn't pop out. Um, and that's why I, I like to leave a nice long tail because I like to really hide you know, quite a bit of this. So I'm taking this needle and I'm running it under the stitches and the nature of cotton yarn is it tends to be a lot stiffer um, than some of the other natural fibers that I like to use. It, it's a wonderful fiber though for for what we're doing here with the dishcloth and I may have said it already before but these things are great. I have some in my kitchen drawer for cleaning pots and pans and they've been in my drawer for years. Um, now the color is not going to stay forever, especially if you're using harsh detergents, but they, the material itself will hold up for many years of use. Okay, so now I've done that. I've hidden it a couple inches under the, the uh, stitches. I'm going to just cut carefully, making sure that I'm only cutting this thread and not the stitches that I've completed. And I am done. So I have a very nice, sturdy dishcloth that can last for years and years in my kitchen, or it can make really nice um, gifts for people, especially if you're looking for a gift at the last minute and don't know what to come up with. This is a really fun thing, and it's, you know, um, handmade and put a little bit of your own heart into it. So anyway, well, that finishes this, this project, and I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click that subscribe button. I'll have more projects like this coming your way. God bless. Bye-bye.